The West African nation, Liberia, has around 4.2 million hectares of forested land, which constitutes 43.4% of the total land area. Almost 100% of the total land area is made of the primary or naturally regenerated forest, with just a few of around 8,000 hectares of planted forest. Liberian forests represent over half of the remaining rainforest in West Africa, and they are dominated by moist evergreen forests and semi-deciduous forests. Throughout Liberia's 14-year civil war, tens of millions of dollars of timber sales went unaccounted for, much of it diverted to fund the fighting. Logging activities soared after the civil war that saw one quarter of Liberia's land being sold to logging companies in just two years. A series of corrective measures to solve the problems were undertaken and one was the decision to embark on community forestry. The forest given to the communities by the government of Liberia is a way of giving ownership back to the people that actually own it. The 2009 Community Rights Law with respect to forest lands, known as the CRL, is the legal framework in Liberia that ensures the regulation of community forestry. The CRL specifically provides for medium-scale forest areas from 5,001 to 49,999 hectares. Although under the CRL, a community can also enter into a small-scale commercial use contract for areas smaller and larger than the aforementioned hectares. Several communities apply for community forest licenses and each set up their community forest management body, the CFMB. As I speak to you, we have about 40 approved and authorized communities in Liberia, in now counties. They are the managers of the community forest management activities. And we have a structure called the Community Forest Governance Structure in each of the approved authorized community given the authority by the FDA through a certificate called the Community Forest Management Agreement. The CFMBs got together and organized a national union. We know that all the CFMB issues will not be raised individually. So we intend having this national an uh, own broader body called the National Union of Community Forest Management Body that every information issue, complaints, counterclaims from community will be forwarded at the national level for the purpose of advocacy. Support from the United States government is helping the people to strengthen ownership of their forest, ensuring they benefit from it. The Institute for Research and Democratic Development, IRED for short, is one of Liberia's leading think tanks with strong proficiency in accountability, governance, and natural resources management issues. IRED was tasked to provide technical support to strengthen communities to manage their forests adequately. Our main role uh, in that project is to provide cool technical support to the National Union of Community Forestry Management Bodies. So among the support we're supposed to provide to them is to strengthen their understanding about the community rights law, helping them providing training capacity building through workshops on issues on, on how they can in turn uh, raise awareness on the community rights law and other governance uh, instruments as far as the, the forestry is concerned. So we're talking about the forestry from law, the community rights law, uh, helping them to be able to uh, uh, look at issues on disputes uh, that uh, arises as a result of the forest, uh, building their capacity on, on issues on governance, on issues on advocacy, uh, uh, networking, strengthening their role, the way they engage other partners, the FDA. So it's a whole range of technical support that we provide to the National Union of Community Forestry Management Bodies. We 
so that they are able to effectively uh, conduct or undertake their own mandate as a, as a union. There have been daunting challenges faced by the different CFMBs, whether they are involved in the commercialization of their forests or conservation of their forest. In order for the unions to be effective to do their work in terms of monitoring, in terms of raising awareness, making sure that citizens clearly understand their role as far as the new law is concerned, which is the community rights law. What, that, what does this law say? What are the opportunities there in for them? What is their own role as, as citizens that lives around the forest or in terms of whether protecting the forest or you know, uh, giving uh, you know, contracts to private companies to log or do whatever businesses as mandated by the law, how do they work with the FDA. So primarily, it's about how do we strengthen, it's about the gap that, that existed in terms of how they relate with the local structures and how they work with national structures to implement the law, which is a community rights law. So it is in this regard that I read uh, uh, worked with uh, with uh, with Lavi to make sure that at least we have some support to strengthen their capacity to be able to do some of the very things that I just outlined. We've been having some some difficulties on the long side of the the third party. Uh, things didn't go uh, well from the initial stage and we decided to put things together small small because um here yeah, when they were not made how the people own the forest how they decided it's supposed to be uh implementing other things and other projects and other things but how the third party is supposed to be or uh, the benefit that the community that the community will receive how it's supposed to be coming some of the the projects that the community the community is supposed to carry out and not be forthcoming because of the way things started, it was not actually done the proper way. So we are trying to do our best with other implementing partners like Fafes, the Livy, like Are, to start to help us with the national or uh, union to help us see how best we can put the uh, the, the refo uh, 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 things into place. The monetary mechanism, which should be the main tax of the Forestry Development Authority, the FDA, is still a challenge. Testing a monitoring framework, FDA should be doing that. They should be monitoring to ensure that third party agreements that they affix their signatures to are, you know, at the agreements are adhered to. So the CFMBs, the communities, do not have a capacity to do that. And at the end of the day, they are at a disadvantage. So uh, to address these constraints, LAVI, as part of this project, we introduce something called uh, a monitoring exercise where we train forest monitors to go on the field and specifically monitor the implementation of the third party agreements and the uh, forest laws and related documents. So every quarter this monitoring exercise is done and the findings are collated and we prepare what we call a bulletin which documents some of the issues and concerns that uh, are currently you know uh, pervasive in the community forest so the idea is to elevate those concerns at the national level so that policy makers can take uh, appropriate actions there have been lots of interferences that are hampering the smooth management of community forests in some parts of liberia and you can see today of the 21 uh, commercial contract that has been signed by uh, communities, I tell you by statistic, we have six operating free and fairly, but the rest are in problems because of some influence that is being made into the community forest governance. Some are faced with the challenge of forest boundary disputes. There, there's one main challenge that I see, which is uh, disputes around boundaries. Where your boundary begins and where my, because see, there are multiplicity of communities that owns this forest. But often you realize that some of the forests tend to, there's this overlap. So some of the communities, as a result that some of the very forests that have been earmarked for conservation, 
tend to be very, 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 uh, 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 you know, arable for farming and for other activities. So you find out that communities who often have issues with livelihood wants to go to the very, you know, uh, 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 forests that are being conserved to do farming and to do other things. You know, so it has become a, a major issue. So on one hand, they agree that yes, we live in this piece of land or this piece of forest to do conservation. But on the other hand, there are other communities who also believe that they don't have source of income which is a livelihood issue. So they tend to go to the very forest where they are conserving. So often it creates disputes and tensions. So on one hand, you have a group of us say, no, we didn't agree, we're going to use this place. So it's one source of tension. How are these boundary disputes mitigated without spilling into violent conflicts? Forest governance is a very compound, complex, you know, um, issue. And we're very mindful about that because the way the system works, if there is an issue or conflict before the government gets there, sometimes it's blown out of hand. So the idea is, if we can have alternate dispute, you know, mechanism. So this alternative dispute resol resolution mechanism is going to be a local structure that will be responsible for identifying, spotting the, the issues or conflicts, uh, conflict triggers, and working with the communities to be able to address these disputes so that they do not revert to violence. Massive awareness on community forestry issues will go a long way in helping to mitigate the challenges faced by the subsector. The forest is what the people have been living on. So telling them, sometimes hey, we, we, we have to protect our forest, we have to keep you the axe up. But if we keep the forest, what are we going to get from other air? Okay, so we sometimes carry on awareness. We've also uh, prepared jingles uh, where you know people are talking about the forest in their local vernacular so that citizens understand exactly what is it about, what are their, what are their roles. So these jingles have been currently played um, in, the, in Nimba and Paso uh, on the local community radio stations so that uh, citizens uh, can be fully aware and impressed about the forest situation. The sustainability of the gains made by working with communities to manage their forests for their own benefits is glaring. By the level of capacity we build, by the level of systems and structures that we are able to set up, the dispute resolution mechanism, the different trainings, uh, strengthening coordination between the, the CFMBs and the FDAs, we think that ultimately that is the, uh, the sustainability element. Because the more these structures are able to work independently and more effectively to be able to achieve their mandate, we think that it will go a long way to ensuring that because some of them are into commercial means that they will raise revenues and the revenue will come back to resustain the structures on the ground. Those that are into commercial will find, you know, uh, maybe even people that want to do ecotourism and other things that will encourage investors and all, all those people. But ultimately, their governance systems and structures must be in place and there must be communities who are on board and whose voices are heard in all the different processes. And we are doing this in consonance with the Firefest project, because Firefest is mainly focused on enterprise development, uh, you know, opportunity livelihoods in the forest area. So we're working with them uh, to ensure that there is a transformation. There has been some visible transformation uh, uh, with regards to the union, um, their reporting skills, the advocacy skills, some of the capacity development that we've given to them, we are gradually seeing the outcomes. The need for further interventions of co-creating the ways in which the ordinary people benefit immensely from their natural resources are being sought. We're only doing this in 11 CFMBs, so we hope that uh, in the future we could get additional support to expand or other uh, NGOs who also engage other CFMBs, you know, in other counties, Cape Mount, Bapolo, in the southeast, you know, uh, with similar interventions. Liberians are grateful for the level of support from USAID to the Liberia Voice and Accountability Initiative, LAVI, towards the forestry sector. 
a specialist supporting the full implementation of the CRL for the benefits of the ordinary people. Yeah, uh, we want to say a big thank you uh, to the USAID uh, through uh, the DAI uh, for the level of support. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, and they've been magnanimous in their support to us for the past three to four years in funding different aspects of our program. And we're also thankful that they are funding this particular uh, uh, component of the project, which is the forest governance. And uh, we hope that uh, ultimately our collective goal, our collective objectives that we set for uh, within the framework of this project will be achieved. And we look forward to working with them now and in the near future. Every time we go out in the field to discuss with citizens, they are always appreciative of what the UC has done. And I mean, they normally say, oh, uh, you say the US government uh, has contributed in beginning to understand what they did not know. You know, oh, we've been sitting here, we didn't even know that this is what's supposed to happen, this is what's supposed to happen. Oh, thank God for you say that these things are happening. You know, uh, if the ordinary people down at the sub-national level can see these things, uh, it's a practical, you know, uh, expression of how, how they feel. With all of the gains made, there are still lots of works to be done to ensure that the people improve their livelihood through the ownership of their forests.